Hey guys, the Network here. I hope you're doing well. In this video, we will be covering stuff like BGP attributes and route filters on Marketic Router OS version 7. So this is a pretty experimental video because a lot of these things is what I'm just labbing and learning since I don't specifically use router OS version 7 that much in my production networks. So please just be advised of that. Um, if you're a new viewer, also welcome to the channel. I am some dude that just loves covering network topologies and concepts and such. And I do a lot of configuration on my critique. So please feel free to look at any of my other videos. Um, there's a lot for you to learn on this channel. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back to the channel. Happy to see you again. And please guys, feel free to leave any comments and engage with me. Tell me what other things you'd like to see or what, um, what you thought about the video or anything really. <laughs> I'd love to hear from you. And the last thing I just want to mention is we will be doing a quick presentation. And then after the presentation, we will be doing a virtual, but kind of physical lab where we will be setting up a lot of stuff regarding route filtering on IBGP and EBGP peers. And you'll actually see how the filtering works and how to configure it. And I'm also going to put a link in the description to a article that Rick Frey, like he posted a PDF with a cheat sheet with a lot of uh, the Microtech route filter rules that you can use easily. So I just want to make sure that you guys can get that as well, because I, I think that Rick did an amazing job. He is a trainer based in the US. And I, it's so nice when people do stuff like that and share those resources freely. So thank you, Rick. You are an amazing and cool dude. So let's get into the video and learn a little bit more about BGP route attributes and the route filtering. All right, so let's chat about BGP attributes and route filters. Now, I've got a slide here that will basically be going over BGP attributes and attributes as a whole exists on all BGP systems. But I just want to stress that some systems have different types of attributes that you can also specify. So what you can do in a Juniper might be different than what you can do in a Microtech. So I want to point out Microtech and Cisco is kind of copy and paste on each other. So if you are familiar with how to do BGP on a Cisco or on a Microtech, you can carry that traffic over to the other vendor quite easily and just work with it extensively. There is what you should also understand a lot of common attributes which exist basically on all systems so that they can communicate properly using BGP and learn the routes effectively. Now, what is BGP attributes? It's just an array of different information that is stored in your update messages that will tell a peer what is happening with that route. You can set specific values in order to change stuff like a path preference or change distances or change community details. There's a bunch of different things that you can do with the attributes, but they exist as a way for us to learn about the routes and figure out for BGP to figure out the best way to get to a specific destination. Now, there are different types of attributes, and these are just the categories. These aren't the actual attributes that you will be tweaking, but I want to make sure that you understand that they exist because you get what we call a well-known mandatory attribute type. And these are attributes that needs to exist on all BGP peers. So this is something that everybody needs to be aware of so that let's say one attribute might be the AS path because obviously the BGP system needs to understand the path that it took to get to a specific destination. So that is an attribute that needs to exist on all systems. And that is a well-known mandatory attribute. Then we get stuff like well-known discretionary attributes or a type. And this is basically where your peer can understand the attribute, but they're not necessarily going to run it themselves. But what they need to be able to do is um, they should also be able to send those updates or messages to upstreams. And this is also ties in with optional transitive because optional transitive is actually does what I just said, um, where you're peering with somebody and they also, they don't need to understand what you're doing with that BGP. Maybe they don't have that attribute, but they need to have flags. So TCP flags in order to send that type of traffic to their upstream where it might be relevant because they need to maybe uh, get whatever information is in an attribute. And then lastly, we've got optional non-transitive. Now, these types of attributes will mainly be on your AS where you will then be specifying stuff like an originator ID or router ID stuff so that 
it's on your device and then you're telling your peers about certain information. So this just covers the types of attributes that you get. Now I've got a little table here that I got from the interwebs. And what I want you to understand is I'm not going to like read each attribute and tell you exactly what they all do, but this is kind of like the big honeypot or the, the pot that's mixed together to make this. Well, I shouldn't have said honeypot because I want to use the word stew now. <laughs> that would be pretty weird putting honey in stew. But this is just like a big pot of all the different ingredients to make the BGP work because you get stuff like your origin, your AS path, your next hop, your med, local prep. And these things all together make a way for the system just to work. So a lot of these settings, even though you don't do anything on them, they, they might just be set to a specific value but they, they might also just have default values of zero but that's still accepted that's still kind of the attributes running it's working it's just set as a default value but you need to understand you can change some of these attributes or manipulate them in certain ways so that a different path can be taken to get to a destination which is so cool i will put a link in the top comment for this so that you can go over each and every individual attribute name but as you can see there is a lot of them and we need to understand bgp is an awesome protocol and not only is it just for learning routes it's a protocol that can carry other protocol stuff which is really such a cool thing all right so bgp path selection so i wanted to make this just to explain or make sure that you understand what bgp does to decide where it's going to choose or which route it's going to choose to take to a destination and obviously when it comes to path selection the first path received is the one that's going to take because if there's only one path that is received then that's going to be the best path and it's going to be installed into the routing table so first path is always going to be your number one choice now what happens if a second path exists in the routing table so it gets two prefixes from two different neighbors what's it going to do then then it's going to look at its highest weight now you need to understand the highest weight it's related to the weight on your router so on your router locally you can set weights now what the weights mean is the route with the highest weight i don't want to say the one that you give the most food but the the one that you um give the most uh, value so let's say if you give a route a value of 2000 and a, another route you give the weight value of a thousand then the route that's 2000 will be preferred and i mean that kind of makes sense already the heaviest weight will win in this regard so that's what that attribute is used for then we get a highest local preference and this kind of works the same as the highest weight it actually really does the same thing it's just a different attribute that works with it but it works within your as so you can use this in ibgp um, just to specify how routes are being sent across the network. Then we've got our shortest AS path. Now this one is important because this also relates a lot to when we get stuff like pre-pinned, uh, pre-pending and AS and stuff like that. Because the shortest AS obviously means the least paths it had to take to get to a specific destination. So maybe the destination is really close, but the link that you have with that upstream is pretty slow. And you don't want that link to be the one where the routes are being received from or how the internet learns how to get your network then there's some cool stuff that you can do with filtering to just change that and increase the path size but i'll show that to you guys as well then our next step or the next thing that bgp will look at to decide which route is the best is locally originated so is a network locally originated or was it aggregated via bgp network cool so let's look at additional stuff that it will look at now, this one is also kind of self-explanatory because BGP will also prefer a certain routing, I don't want to say prefix, but way that it learns the routes. And there's the word I'm looking for is incomplete. So a route, if BGP learns a route as incomplete, it will technically prefer that route firstly. Reason being is those are routes that are technically, they've been redistributed into the routing protocol. So that's why they will show up as incomplete because maybe you had it as OSPF and then you redistributed that OSPF route to BGP instead of specifying it as a network. And then all of the BGP peers will then learn this route as an incomplete route. After that, we've got the EGP which is when we are connecting to a different autonomous system and we are learning routes from them and they are learning routes from us. So EGP is going to be um, the next step. And then lastly is your IGP. So the main thing I want you to understand is an eBGP route is going to be preferred over an iBGP route. So 
just to make that clear i also think i didn't mention in the previous video an ebgp route will also by default have a route distance of 20 whereas an ibgp route where you're connecting to your same autonomous system will have a distance of 200 on microtech all right then after this um let's say ebgp or egp versus igp we've got our med so uh the multi-exit discriminator and this is basically if you're going to be peering but med you're using not inside an as you're, you're going to be using this when you're peering to another autonomous system but this is only going to be between going to be between you and another as so it's not going to relate to any traffic to their upstream now what the med does is kind of the same as the weight but it does it works the opposite way so the device that has the lowest med value so if my med is 100 for one path and the med is 200 for another path then the route that's been set as 100 will be preferred so that is what med kind of does and then bgp needs to prefer ebgp routes over ibgp routes which we've already said i mean i'm not sure this i've copied and pasted directly from microtix website by the way and then we need to prefer a route that comes from the bgp router with the lowest router id now if you have an originator id the device with the lowest originator id will then be preferred and then lastly the route or not lastly second last is a shortest route reflection cluster list now cluster lists i'll be honest i don't even really use them so uh, we'll figure that out when we get there but i've i've heard people ask me about the clusters and such and then lastly, we've got the prefer the path that comes from the lowest neighbor address. So this might be if you have two neighbors and then the neighbor with the lowest address, like IP, that's going to be the route that gets preferred. But that's like really low at the, the, at, at the bottom of the barrel. So that in all likelihood, that won't happen, but it can get up to that point where the route just doesn't know. And then it just picks the lowest IP to use as its next hop. All right. Now let's continue. I want to talk about BGP filtering because this is very important. If you are going to be peering with BGP to any type of upstream or you're going to be peering to the internet, then you definitely need to understand how BGP filtering works because this is going to be a lifesaver. Now what it does is it provides a way for us to create policies that we can decide what we want to do with specific prefixes and not just the prefixes. We can also, uh, there I've got a highlight, we can manipulate stuff with the BGP attributes. So we can change certain attributes using a route filter so that we can preference certain routes, which is so awesome. Um, what you can also see is we can apply them separately. So you need to understand that filters can be applied on your incoming traffic, but also on your outgoing traffic. So the stuff that you are learning, as well as the routes that you're advertising. Uh, the routes or the filters also work in a sequential manner. Now, what that means is when you set up filters, you'll see they're going to be in like a list and that list works from top to bottom. So if you have an overriding uh, item above another one, then the overriding item will get preferred. It just works like access control, really. It will see where it finds the first hit and then it will just do what it does with the first hit. And then anything after that, it will just ignore. All right. And we need also need to understand it enables the usage of stuff like BGP communities. But BGP communities will go into more depth in another video. This is just going to be a way for us to look at filters and manipulating certain attributes. Ah, uh, here's something that I want to bring up, and that is reject no more discard. What does that mean? Well, the discard action is gone on routers version 7. They've gotten rid of it. They've discarded discard. And it used to be a very cool action that you could use because you could effectively um, drop silently any routes that you used to learn so that it didn't appear in the routing table and therefore it wouldn't be in the memory of the router. Now it's just the reject function or action and it's got its pluses and downsides the plus is it's one command that you need to know if you don't want to learn something or accept the route um, it's also great for troubleshooting and diagnostic because it means those routes will always then now be injected or added to the routing table so you can see the routes you'll be aware of them so you can know those routes aren't active and then also the minus for me is it is quite memory intensive. So if you have a small Microtech, then this might be a problem. But this is kind of where Microtech's new models come in, the, the CCR2Ks. So 
they are specifically made for this type of routing and this is why uh, there shouldn't be an issue on them because they've got adequate memory for those type of situations but if you're running a small market tick and you're trying to peer with the internet then there's no way for you to drop certain routes or discard them you're just going to learn everything now and this might cause some memory issues so if you're using a smaller micro tick like a 1016 or something uh, just be aware of that you're definitely go maybe going to want to look at upgrading to something else so that you can have enough memory for all of those routes all right let's just go next oh this is also another issue with the new route rest version 7 bgp i didn't mention in the previous video but i felt like it warranted some attention again uh, confederations do not work on router S version 7 so i said some features don't work like bfd this is another of those features that don't work you can't do feder confederations with version 7 which is also unfortunate because i i know of a few people that have asked me about confederations and that means they might probably be using them actively and if you're going to use router S version 7 that's not going to work for you so you're still going to have to stick on version 6 until the confederations are fixed on version 7 all right now we can get to the fun part i just want to explain the topology that we're going to be working on and this has been set up on a mixture of some devices on my eve ng which are cloud hosted routers or chr for short which are these two routers on the left my tmb lab 03 and tmb lab 04 and they are going to be forming ibgp connections to tmb lab 01 which is this middle router and the ASS that you see are obviously the autonomous system numbers, which we've covered in the previous video. Again, I highly recommend looking at it if you haven't. And then we've got an eBGP peer to an external AS, uh, which is TMB Lab 02 with its AS. Now, I've also added the IP prefixes of each of these uh, devices so that you can understand where the prefix exists. It exists currently as a loopback or a, a local address on each router. And these routes are being advertised to the bgp network so that we can learn about them and get to these subnets so let's get into the actual um market six by logging onto my linux box and getting onto one box all right so here we in our practical lab i am already logged on to tmb lab 01 and 02 i'm just navigating to tmb lab 01 because this was that middle router that was establishing two BGP peer or IBGP peers to the local routers and an eBGP peer to an autonomous system or another autonomous system. Now, first thing I want to show you again is where to see the BGP attributes. Now to see them, you can just go into your IP routes and you can double click on any route specifically when it comes to a BGP route. And then at the top, you can go to the BGP tab and now inside this tab is all of the different attributes that you can set or see or change. And again, BGP uses these attributes to effectively um, learn routes and decide how to get to a specific AS and all that stuff. All right. I also want to make it clear some things work differently between different um autonomous or not autonomous system types bgp types because again you're only going to use stuff like local pref and wait when it comes to ibgp or local things and you're going to use stuff like med if you're connecting to external uh, bgp peers and even stuff like the as path where you can prepend as path things uh, you're going to also just do that so Let's quickly see what we can do with our routes. I've got a ton of routes here. I'm learning a bunch of eBGP routes because we can see their eBGP by the distance. It's 20. And then I'm learning two iBGP routes from my iBGP peers. So what I'd like to do is maybe make some changes on how we're learning the distance of these iBGP routes. So what I could do is I can go into my routing and filters. And this is now where you're going to create route filters. And then when we click on this plus, this is what's going to com confuse a lot of people. And I've said it in another video where I discussed route filters on router OS version 7. They've changed this completely. There is no easy box that just has all of the options listed. And then you can just cherry pick what you want to do. Now you actually need to kind of know what you're doing because you need to script it. But don't fear, you can still go to the reference material. So you can go to Marketix Wiki or uh, Help Site. You can... Let me just go there again because I use it still for myself. So in help.marketic.com forward slash docs, you go to the routing and routing filters. And here it explains exactly how the route filters works again and the different types of 
um, things you can set. But when it comes to route filters, what I want you to understand is you're going to specify if, because you're going to say if something happens, a condition, if something matches or matches, <laughs> I don't know about matches, but if a condition matches, then perform an action. And that action you just con configure in some curly brackets and you can specify a ton of details. Like here you can see, you can do so much cool stuff uh, with these chains. And again, you can use the reference material, but I also think it is a little bit uh, unhandy if you are maybe going to a remote data center and you lose internet connectivity and now you can't access the reference material. There's going to be some predicaments there. So I actually think Microtik maybe needs to add whatever reference material for this onto their Microtik so that it's easily accessible still, uh, even if you lose internet access. Anyways, now what we can do is we can specify a chain and this doesn't change. This is just a name. And this chain is what you can now attach to your, either your in or your out filters. But I'm going to give this the chain name as, uh, let's make this ibgp-in. So this will be for any of my IBGP connections that are coming into my router. We're going to perform certain stuff. So now we're going to start with that if. So we can say if, and what do we do now? Now we need to specify a condition. So conditions that we can set is, I know that I'm learning these two BGP routes. So since we know they're BGP, maybe we can just say if it is, if the protocol is BGP, what do we want to do? Now we can set an action. So I can do something like accept. So it will accept the BGP connections. Actually, let's, let's not add the accept bit yet. I actually want to break this so you can see how we can fix this and learn something. So let's just say if the protocol is BGP, then we can set the distance to, uh, let's make it 100. And then I'm going to apply this. And then what I need to do is I want to first see, has this taken effect? Has this done anything to the route list? No, it hasn't. Reason being is we haven't applied this filter yet to the BGP peer. So let's do that. Let's go into our BGP. Let's go into our connections. And then I know the TMB lab 03 and 04, these are IBGP connections. And I can see the role is IBGP. So let's apply the filter to those peers. So I can just say my input filter because these are routes that I'm learning from them. I can just say my BGP in. So let me add it and let's quickly go back to our routing table. So if I go IP routes, oh no, <laughs> it's red. We broke it. So this is bad. And the reason this broke is because we actually didn't specify that we wanted to accept the routes as well, because the filters are so specific now that if you specify something, and you don't accept anything else, it's just gonna drop everything. This works exactly like an access control list on a Cisco. So, you know, you, you need to specify the stuff you're allowing, but since we didn't specify that we're actually accepting anything, it's just dropping everything now. So this is also uh, maybe, I don't wanna say a double-edged sword when it comes to filters, but be aware of it, because if you're not aware of it, you might just see that all your stuff stops working and you're gonna be in for a bad time. So let's just, change this by setting the distance to 100 but we also want to accept the traffic and all i did there was add this little semicolon because now we can add on top of this command and we can say we want to set the distance and we want to accept it so i will apply this now we've got a very basic rule to, that says anything that's bgp set the distance to 100 and accept so let's go into our ip routes and ta-da, they've been restored and I can see both of the routes. And the cool bit is the distance has been updated. So now it's been set to 100. So if these routes were being learned and we had OSPF with 110 distance, then these routes will be preferred over an OSPF route, um, which is pretty, pretty interesting. So let's see what else we can do with route filters. So this is just a very basic thing, how we can filter an incoming route. Let's do some stuff with our outgoing routes. And this will be very um beneficial when it comes to us and peering to the internet so first thing i want to do is actually go to the tmb lab 02 router and then on tmb lab 02 i want to have a look at my ip routes and i'm not learning anything uh, i just want to see if i maybe have some legacy configuration yes i do there is an output filter even though we haven't configured anything yet so there we go now we can see all of our bgp routes we're learning them there should be five of them and I'm happy with this. 
we're also learning the IBGP routes, but that makes sense because as I said in the previous video, IBGP routes will still be advertised to an eBGP peer so that they are aware of it. So if you double click on it, you will still see what the AS path is and all that stuff. So you can still get to that route, which is cool. So we actually now want to change some stuff with some output filters so that this TMB Lab 02 receives some of these routes differently. So it, it, we can tweak some of the attributes. So let's do some tweaking. So what I'm going to do is go back to TMB Lab 01. Let's go into our routing filters and let's add a new rule and let's call this EBGP dash out. So this will now affect our out filter for our EBGP connection. So let's do another if and then let's set a condition. So what's the condition going to be? Um, so many things that we can choose. So I can either do the destination length or I can do a destination or I can do a protocol again, but let's be very specific. Let's just do it for a specific destination. So let's say if the destination equals, and let's look at our destination so we can know what we want to tweak actually. And let's say I want to tweak this 100.64 100.0/23. So this is going to be the destination address, this prefix. We're going to say if it is this prefix, we want to perform some action. So let's make the brackets or curly brackets and then let's set our action. So I can either say just accept and then it will just accept this one prefix, but as I said before, all of the other prefixes will drop then. Um, so what else we could do potentially is Let's do a destination length first, actually. So let's change this to destination uh, length and let's make it less than equals. And let's say, what is my biggest subnet here? I think it is a slash 23. It is a slash 23. So let's make it a 23. Let's just say accept. So let's apply this. And then the first thing I want to do is just apply this route filter to my BGP connection so that it actually takes effect from the beginning. So I'm going to go into the 2TMB lab 02, set my output filter, eBGP dash out and apply this. And let's just make sure on TMB lab 02, if I still receive any prefixes and I see I'm only receiving one, but I think it's because I uh, made a mistake with the uh, one operator, the less than sign, I should have actually changed it around. So let's fix that. That's a quick fix. So let's go back into our out filters and let's swap this around and apply it. So we're saying bigger than equals 23. And if I go back, ta-da, now I'm learning all of these slash 24s, subnets and my slash 23. So now we're at least advertising all subnets out to our EBGB peer again. But this is now just a very basic generic filter. Let's now do some tweaking of the attributes. So one attribute that a lot of people like to uh, ask me about is the prepend AS. And I just want to get in there again at the uh, one of these routes, the AS path. Whenever we prepend AS, we're actually just adding additional our own AS in here to make the path a bit longer. Why would we want to do that? Well, let's say you are a multi-home BGP, uh, or you you've got multi-home BGP. You've got multiple peers, either different ISPs or the same upstream, but two different links. But you want one path to be uh, preferenced over the other paths. Then you can do the AS path prepending so that one path becomes longer. And it will make sense if we actually implement the filter rule. So let's do that. And I'm going to do this from my TMB Lab 01. And I'm just going to copy the same rule quickly. Let's just leave it as if, and let's specify a condition. So the one condition for me is going to be if, let's say a specific destination. So this will be for a specific prefix now. If the prefix equals and let's say it's this 164 100.0 slash 23. If this is the prefix or this is the destination, what is the action that we want to do? Well, one thing is we are still going to want to accept it. And the other thing that we want to do is we actually want to uh, set. So we're going to use the set command. And then I'm going to use the reference material to just see what we want to set. And this should be the prepend. So I'm just going to scroll until I find it. Here we can see BGP path prepend. So I'm going to copy that. And then I can put it here. 
So I can say set the BGP path prepend, and now I can specify how many times I want to prepend. So I can make it one, two, three. Let's make it five. <laughs> that should be interesting. It should be quite big. And let me apply that. And now that that's been, that's been applied, I can see the rule here. Let's see, has it actually taken effect? Let's go to TMB Lab 02. Double click on this rule and I can see the AS path, it's still the same. So why is that? Well, because of the sequential like way this table works. So I just need to bring this EBGP dash out up. So I'm just going to, you can click on the sequence button so you can actually change the sequencing. And then I'm just going to put this rule above the generic one that's just allowing all of the prefixes to my peer that's going out. Now let's quickly go back to TMB Lab 02. If I double click this now, whoa, it's crazy. <laughs> I've got like a ton of, uh, the AS path just grew a lot. So it's just a way for me to trick the BGP into preferring a different path. And this is again, this is something that you're going to do more for your eBGP neighbors. Um, we can also set our MED or our MED. So let's just copy the same rule. And we'll say if, and let's choose a different destination. So let's say if the destination equals and let's see another rule actually let's let's take this 192.168.123.0.24 i'm going to say if this is the destination 192.168.123.0.24 um what i'd like to do is curly brackets with my action and then i can also do another set and i think it's bgp dash mid and i can give it a number so i can make it five zero so I'm going to apply this and I've got it wrong. And this is why we're going to go to the reference material. So it's BGP med, uh, BGP out med. There we go. Sorry, BGP out med, BGP dash out dash med. So let's set that BGP dash out dash med. I'm going to apply that. And let's just also make sure that this is above. It is already above. So now we are saying if the destination is this prefix, set the med to 50. So let's go see, did that actually have any impact on our neighbor? And yes, it did. There they see that the mid is 50. So if there was multiple routes and the mid value was different, then the mid with the lower value would be preferred, which is another way that we can peer with our upstream to tell them which path we'd actually like them to take, which is awesome. Uh, let's just verify that it actually works properly by changing this maybe to 100 and applying, go back. And there we can see it updated in real time. It is 100. So we've got that filtering now. So we've just done some med filtering, prepending. We've allowed some prefixes. Let's maybe drop some prefixes because that's something we haven't done yet. So to do that, it's actually going to be straightforward. We can just, I'm going to drop a rule that I'm learning from my EBGP peer. So let's just click on the rule. Let's call this EBGP dash in. And now what I'd like to do is I would say if and then we can specify what the destination is. And that's just two equal signs again. And let's say this 164 slash 24 So 164.104.0 slash 24. So that prefix, I'm going to reject just like that. I'm going to hit apply. And let's apply this filter to our eBGP in filter. So I'm going to go routing BGP. And let's set this in our input filter. So ebgp dash in and apply it. And let's look at the routing table. And oh no, we broke everything again. And again, the reason is we haven't structured our filters properly. So let's quickly fix that by either allowing all of the other prefixes or uh, just structuring some stuff correctly. But we should actually add a filter above that other uh, or just below that filter that will allow all of these other prefixes. So here I can see the biggest one is a slash 22. So let's maybe just allow that. So I'm going to go into my routing filters. I'm going to copy this ebgp dash in filter. And then I can also just again set if the destination length um, equals, I think it's actually less than equals. Uh, was it a 22? then we want to do an action which is accept let's apply that 
and that should be good so let's quickly look at our bgp routes i'm still not actually i'm, I'm just learning this one slash 22 i actually think again I'm, i made the same mistake so let's just do that that should hopefully fix everything it did though i see there's one slash 24 that's not working but that one is the one that we specified a rule for not to work so that is actually expected that is normal so we're actually very happy with this so now we've got two rules to say hey uh, we are going to drop this one specific prefix but we're going to allow everything else that is bigger than a slash uh, 23 or below the slash 22 and we've got an ibgp in that's changing the distance and we've got some ebgp out which is changing some of those attributes um let's change a, another value and i actually want to do something fun and this this hasn't been planned at all so let's just see how this works out i just want to log on to those cloud hosted routers quickly um, i'm just going to log on to one of them actually and i'm going to add an additional a subnet because i'm going to have the same subnet coming from both devices and then we're just going to play around with the weight quickly so you can see how weight actually also affects bgp so let's just look at my neighbors and then i can quickly just connect on to tmb lab 03 yeah let's let's do it from 03 so admin tmb123 so what i'm going to do is add an ip address or let's just print quickly so the IP address that I want to add is going to be 192, 168, 124, slash 24. And my interface is going to be the Allo interface. And then I just want to add that address to my BGP out. So IP firewall address list. So we'll add. Uh, the list is my BGP out and my address will be 192.168.124.0/24. Perfect. So I want to have a look at router or lab 01. If I look at the routing table, we should see I am now receiving two prefixes for the same route 192.168.124.0/24, but only one route is being preference and that is because of how bgp works again with the selection process now what i can do is i can change this or trick it i don't want to say trick but we can update it using stuff like the weight so let's create a local in filter or in filter so i'm going to go to my routing filters and then i'm going to uh, we can keep the same ibgp uh, dash in but let's just copy this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if the destination or yes, let, let's do it. If destination equals 192.168.124.0/24, we're going to do an action. So the first thing we're going to do is let's change the distance to five. And let's also maybe uh, accept and sorry let's do another thing let's set the weight and let's just look at that command structure for it so we can do bgp weight bgp dash weight so we're going to set bgp dash weight to we set the heaviest weight will win so let's make that 2000 and i am going to give it another chain actually i'm going to just call this uh, let's say lab 03 apply that and let's copy the same rule but let's set this weight to something lower to 1000 i'm going to say this is ibgp in lab 04 so now i've got two different filters that i'm going to also just apply to my tmb lab 01 and or 03 and 04 so let's go into our bgp so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a ibgp in lab 03 for this one and for the second connection i'm going to do ibgp in lab 04 i'm going to hit apply and if we look at our routing table now i actually see that the one has broken completely oh but that is our slash our 123 address which is actually expected but here i can see the routes have flipped around and the reason being is because the weight 
is bigger for this one. So this is a bigger weight and therefore this route has been preferenced. So this is actually quite useful and ISPs do this a lot if they are using BGP and they want to set up some form of failover, they might just tweak the weight uh, for one of the peers to be a lot heavier so that that peer gets um, picked for the routing. All right, but let's quickly fix this one that we broke and we can fix that quite easily by just going back to our filters. And the reason it broke is because I'm no longer accepting that prefix. So I could essentially just copy the same rule and apply it to the same chain and then just make sure that it's being accepted. But there we can see it went through. So now we've got a ton of different filter rules that we set up, eight of them. We've allowed specific destinations. We've advertised out specific information. We've tweaked attributes. And this is wild. And I feel like this is just kind of the beginning because there's so much that we can do with this. But I at least hope this has shown you all of the cool things that you can do when it comes to tweaking attributes because you can do stuff like automated failover you can um, tell the internet what path to take to get to your um, public subnet it's really um, the sky is the limit if you think about it you just need to know what you want to achieve and what you want to do and then you need to go into the reference material and maybe just lab it yourself like i'm doing um, spin up a couple of chrs and just see uh, what the impact is when you want to apply that specific route because yeah, as you saw my, the microtech is still nice enough to tell you if something's not valid so if you create a filter rule and the option that you're trying to use isn't in the correct context or it's the correct value it just will throw out an error and tell you hey this this isn't right buddy uh please change it all right so i actually think this is where i'm going to be ending off the video i will still be making some more videos on bgp i just wanted to get this video out regarding route filters um, next step we might do some stuff with ibgb and route reflectors again uh, maybe i'll build up some more on this or maybe we'll do some ipv6 with uh, bgp even though it's, it's kind of the same thing it's just using uh, ipv6 instead of uh, ipv4 and it's it's a blast I really i want you guys to enjoy and love bgp as much as i do because it is my favorite protocol and it's you can do so much with it it's still so crazy to me i still can't believe how complex it is but also how simple it is that the whole internet can be ran off of this this protocol and it's so cool anyways guys i hope you have a, a wonderful wonderful day or evening and i again like to just thank my youtube members patreon members uh you guys who are the viewers really thank you for the support you guys have uh, been so helpful and been helping me push on with creating content and hopefully we can keep going at this pace and just bring out some more good stuff anyways i'll see you guys in the next video have a good time bye